I'm happy. I'm yeah. happy you're talking about success on now, uh, Dr. Naniak. Very quickly, mm -hmm. tell us how uh, he was chosen at that point in time. Uh, we're trying mm -hmm. to compare how he merged the Emir uh, to what has just obtained now in Kano. Okay. You see, he, he became the Emir at the age of 33. And he was able to bring people together and to disabuse their mind of the so-called misunderstanding between the government in Kaduna and the people of the Kalosa house in Kano, the ruling house of, in Kano. And gradually he was able to carry people along and to conduct his own affairs of administration uh, for the rest of 51 years or so. And throughout, he was able to stay with up to 17 governors. And in his interaction with them, there were problems here and there, and especially with the first governor, that was um, Elijah Audubaco. This is only natural, because the area of Kano, Elijah Audubaco, came to the throne at the time when areas were powerful and were in control of every aspect of the administration. They were in charge of the native authority. They were in control of the native police. They were in control of the native courts. They were in control of the native prison. They were in control of the land. They distribute land and confiscate land in accordance with the dictates of the law. But with the coup of 1966, which um, made Nigeria a semi-unitary state, gradually all these powers were taken away from the area, and they were transferred to the newly formed state in 1967. How and these say? governors... So, sorry, Dr. Nani, uh, you've just touched mm -hmm. on a very salient point in terms of the powers that the emirs used to have until Nigeria became Nigeria and an entity, and some of those powers were taken away. How would you, mm -hmm. how would you rate the, the stool of the emir? Is it like that of many traditional rulers who say that many powers they have have been eroded, but in some cases, too, they have lost respect. Do you think mm -hmm. that the, the stool of the emir is one of those? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the stool of the area of Kano is, is a very powerful stool, and it has not lost its vigor. The respect that the office of the area in Kano enjoys is still there. And in fact, this is perhaps due to the charisma of the late Elijah Ado Bayero. He was such a versatile ruler a person that has contact with people from within and beyond, a very influential ruler, a person that um, is that far-sighted and he's a bridge builder because the position of Kano as the center of commerce in northern Nigeria makes him to open up and to be in a position to accommodate all people of different cultures. In fact, the influx of many people from southern Nigeria to Kano reached its climax during this period. He was such a person that not, not only accommodating and tolerant, but he was a person that even encouraged his people, the indigenous, to feel that each and every person that lives in Kano is a brother, a relation, and in fact, they have to interact in the way that Kano would benefit fully. How in much, fact, this was... This, okay. Dr. Nani, how much influence would you say that the stool still wields in the Emirate? Uh, is it, you say it's still a very powerful stool, but 
I mean, the story, how much influence would you say it still will? Do people still listen to the words of the Emir? Definitely. The people listen to the word of the Emir. That's why I say the position of that office is still very, very powerful and it has an impact in the society. Let me show you, let me give you an example. Whenever anything happened in Ghana, anything, the people do not look to anybody to solve their problem except the Emir. And if anybody would dare, would dare create a problem or would dare invoke the wrath of the Emir, that would have been the end. All right, Dr. Mohammed and the reason why Elijah Audu had a lot of problems when he was the first governor of Kano was that he was seen to be dictating to the Emir. What can you tell us? People, what, what can you tell people. us about the views of some who uh, are protesting about his uh, assumption of office as I mean, he has been made the Emir? You have some people who are already writing some columns this morning saying it has been politicized and that that's why you see protests in the streets of Kano. Uh, what oh, do you I think mean, about that? Oh, you mean the new area? Yes. Oh, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was talking about the old area, the, the deceased. Yes, let's talk about the new one and the protests on the streets of Kano. How come? Okay. I mean, okay. You know, what brought about the protest now? I have explained earlier that the, uh, the misinformation that was earlier spread that it was the son of the Emir that was appointed. And the government official announcement later that it was Jerusalem, the Jerusalem that was appointed, was what led to the protest. Because many people started jubilation earlier on that it was the son of the Emir that was appointed, and later on, they were, that jubilation was just cut short by, by government announcement. And this was what started the problem. And in fact, as we said, the action of the ruling party, that is the PDP, to have sent congratulatory message even before government made its final decision, was what led to this protest. Many people were not happy. Because the responsibility of appointing the area rested with the state government. But the state government did not release the information of the new area when we just had that the PDC has sent a message to Kano congratulating Sunuti Lanido Adobayomi, that is the eldest son of the area. And subsequently, Around 3 to 4 p.m., the government, the government made its own announcement. This created the problem. Secondly, another thing, you know, it's quite natural. It's quite natural to an area that was in office for 51 years. He had so many children. And now that he died, many were thinking that one of his children would be appointed. But... What the elected, the, out of the three names that the elected sent to the governor, the governor approved the one that was not the direct son of the Emir. It's just natural that some of the, the some of the supporters might be slighted, and hence this kind of protest. Secondly, you see, there was even you could even give some political motive into it. Because the Nusi Lani, the Sunusi was in the federal government at one time, and he had some problems with President Jonathan that led to his removal. And when he was removed, he returned back to Kano, and Kano, likely enough, is an opposition state. And, opposite, and the governor is that very outspoken governor that has come out not only to refuse PDT, but also to be at loggerhead with the president.
percent. Okay, uh, Doctor now, Anania, could you? I'm telling. You, let me finish. Let me finish. Since Sunotila Mrs. Nuti was if not in good terms with the president, and Kongkote is not in good terms with the president, it is seen that the appointment of Sunotila Mrs. Nuti is done in a way that will make or that will stop the inroad which PDT would want to make in Kano. Hence, some of its supporters started also to create some problems. All right. Could you tell us this before we go? Because we're really out of time on this one. I mean, some of the columns that we're reading them this morning, they argue mm -hmm. that, well, uh, their perception is that it's been politicized. And then they went mm -hmm. on to say that, who knows, what happens, uh, assuming uh, the APC loses the governorship seat, does that mean that they will also possibly seek to change who the Emir is? What do you think about that perception? Please come again. The perception that it's been politicized. Now, those who argue that way also say that if the P I beg your pardon, if the APC were to lose the governorship seat, they may then think that well, uh, the stool should be occupied by somebody who they favour. Ah, uh, well, 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 well. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Everybody may be entitled to their opinion. But I don't think this is the situation. Okay, we have to thank you for speaking with us today. Dr. Tijani Mohamed Naniya is, the, is of the Department of History, Bayero University, Kano. He's also the former Commissioner for Information, Youth and Sports. Thank you for speaking with us today on the program. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, then. We'll be back in just a moment. Join us again. <laughs>